Welcome back, friends. Um, so I had this bin of bells on my side yard, and I had it in uh, in a shelf, and I thought it was covered well enough. But apparently, we had some rain storms, and some of these bells got a little bit rusty. I think some moisture got in here, unfortunately. I'm kind of embarrassed about this. But I want to show you how you can clean these things up, and I'll show you a few different ways to do that. Um, we've got different types of bells here. Some are unfinished, uh, basically raw metal. Some are painted, but still the paint was worn and the rust got through. Some are painted and fine. However, inside, maybe there's a little bit creeping in, a little bit of rust. And you may have bells like this that also um, have similar issues, or you just want to protect from this happening into the future. So I, I'll show you some ways that you can do that. But first we're gonna clean this stuff up. And I have a couple of ways to do that. So let's get going. Okay, here we are in the side yard and here's what we're looking at. So let me give you a quick tour of the bells. We've got a cha-cha bell, black. I believe this is an LP. Got some duct tape on it. So we're gonna restore these completely and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Um, probably mostly with mechanical um, stripping. And then we're going to paint them. This one is a dark bell. And I like the finish. I'm not going to paint this. But I want to get rid of the rust. So for this one, I'm going to do a very simple treatment. We're just going to spray it with a chemical rust inhibitor and converter. These bells right here are all uh, raw metal. But they're coated with um, probably a, a clear coat and they do have rust coming through. So we're gonna first strip this coating off and then we're gonna refurbish them. We're gonna get rid of the rust and uh, and then recoat them. So that's this one too. You can see how it's kind of shiny. So it has a coating on it. We need to replace that coating, but first we need to take the coating off and I'll show you a couple of different ways to do that. This one is pretty raw, pretty much raw metal. I'll probably use a light, um, mechanical stripping method on that. Um, this one, I want to preserve the finish. So we're going to use a chemical stripping method. And then on this one, since it's chrome, we don't have a lot of issue with, with uh, rust. However, the inside there's some, and I want to maintain the chrome finish. I don't want to scratch that. So I'm going to show you how to do that um, and keep it looking good, uh, but also get rid of all this kind of schmutzy stuff and, and rust in there. All right, so let's get to the methods that we're going to use. Here are some of the tools or methods that you can use to strip and treat rust. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, this is a sanding mop, and I use this to remove uh, dirt, grime, rust, all kinds of stuff from oddly shaped items. Uh, that would work really well on something like this where there's curves and you can just turn the sanding mop on. And I'm not gonna do it right in front of you because I have to wear protective gear. I usually wear gloves and of course a uh, face shield and sometimes a, a mask so I don't breathe dust. Um, I realize most people are not gonna have this so let's look at uh, doing it by hand. Now you can use steel wool and when you get steel wool, there's grades, right? And this is grade I know it seems, seems weird, but this is number quadruple zero or four aught, it's sometimes called. This is grade zero. And uh, there's different grades. You can see it, it moves to coarse. Uh, let me show you on this one. So uh, quadruple zero is the finest. And then we have three zeros, two zeros, one zero, one, two, three. And it goes from fine to coarse. So this one is the finest, and it looks like this, right? This one is in the middle, right? That's a zero, looks like that. So compared to the, you can see here, this is zero, this is quadruple zero. So there's a difference there. This one, the zero, and I'll use this, I'll use both these and I'll show you the result. Uh, this one will put little tiny scratches on stuff. So you might wanna use this on, 
uh, something that's already got a brushed steel look. Uh, maybe, what could we use it on? Yeah, you know, maybe on this one, if we don't mind, if it has a little bit of a brushed steel look. But you don't want to use that one on the Chrome. You can use the quadruple odd or quadruple zero on Chrome, and it pretty much will not scratch it. But you also want to spray a little bit of uh, lubricant, like a silicone lubricant, like WD-40. Well, or yeah, not this is not a silicone lubricant. It's just a lubricant. But WD-40, something like this, is a spray lubricant. You can spray it on the steel wool, and then you can, uh, you know remove the rust from that. All right, and then we have um, to get the coatings off of things, whether it's paint or uh, clear coat, we can use a stripping gel. I like this one because it's more natural um, and this stuff works really well, but you have to put it and leave it for a while and then it'll strip things off and we'll do that. And then to remove the rust or treat the rust or convert the rust, you can use a product like this, Evapor Rust. This stuff works really well. Uh, I use it for my car parts. I've got some nuts and bolts soaking. The only limitation with this is that you have to completely submerge the thing in the evapo rust and you have to let it sit for a while. So you just need enough of this. It's not cheap. This was like $13 at the hardware store, um, but you can reuse it. So you can, you can get evapo rust and submerge the item. You can also submerge half of it, flip it over to the other half. But that's, a, that's something you wanna consider just to remove rust, it works really well. And then we've got something like this, uh, and this is a rust treatment spray, and this just converts rust. So what I was gonna do with this one is we're gonna, we're gonna try it on this bell. And all we're gonna do is clean this bell off a little bit, just so it's clean. Then we're gonna spray this treatment on and leave it, and that's it. Just So that's a one, one and done kind of treatment. All right, so that's what I've got going here. I'll show you what I'm doing on what instrument and as we go along and then we can all see the results. First up is the Gankogui. All I'm gonna do with this is clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. It's clean. It'll just remove any grease or anything. Uh, and I'm gonna wipe it down with a, with a towel and then we're gonna apply the Permatex spray. The bell is cleaned off with alcohol. This is what it looks like. We're gonna do it before and after. You can see that there's like paint and things on it, but I like the look. I want. I don't wanna make it too clean. So I'm just gonna fix the rust. So we're gonna spray this on, rust treatment. Just do a light coat. All right, so I'll finish this and then we'll take a look. While the Permatex spray is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and use the sanding mop to strip some of the rust off of this piece. And I'll, I'll get you started here, but I'm gonna do most of this off camera. The sanding mop got most of the rust off really quickly and you can see that it's just down to the metal. Um, however, it didn't get all of it in some of these crevices and it didn't get the inside and I wanna show you if I can here in the sun, uh, there. There's quite a bit of rust inside there and while I can't get the sanding mop in there, I could reach in there possibly with Something like this, a little brush. This one actually doesn't fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use another chemical. So this will be a combo. This is mechanical and chemical. I'm gonna use this stuff, which is a uh, rust. It's called rust dissolver. There's a few different kinds of these and this will convert the rust to a neutral material and then it'll coat the inside. And I'm, I might use it on the outside too. So I don't wanna paint this but I might use this chemical just to protect it, to give it a protective coating. And I can always reapply it to the outside if I need to, but it shouldn't rust um, if, you know, if it's not exposed to moisture very much, it shouldn't, rust shouldn't really be a problem. So I'm gonna spray some of this, uh, this is a gel. In fact, I'll show you what it looks like. It's 
it's like a where's my sunlight there we go see it's like a gel so I'm just gonna use a toothbrush and spread that around all right so I just went around went on the inside with uh, this toothbrush I don't know whose this is but I don't think they'll mind I'll just I'll just rinse it off before I put it back and uh, we'll see what that does needs a few minutes to uh, take effect in the meantime here's our gankogui and you can see that there's still signs of rust and that's normal you usually need to do a few coats with this stuff so i'm going to give this another spray and we'll let let it do it do its thing all right so we're going to clean this bell up with just um some of this triple zero uh steel wool and we're going to spray a little bit of wd-40 on there um we'll just put it on the bell just a tiny bit and let's see how we can clean this up let's do it right now Not bad. A little bit more. It does take a little bit of elbow grease and uh, some pressure, but what I like about the triples, the uh, quadruple zero, is it doesn't. It doesn't scratch anything. It's pretty much non-abrasive. And uh, especially if you put a little bit of lubricant on it. On things like this, especially where you've got rough edges, you can't get in there with something that's coarse. Uh, you need something fine. And um, this will not change the finish much at all. So let's take a look. Yeah, this is a Pete Engelhart. So um, it's kind of a rare bell. Inside's a little dusty, but I already did the, the backside. Look at that. And the best part of using this technique is that when, when you're done, you're done. You don't, you can just leave these with a light coat um, of WD-40 or silicon lubricant. Um, you don't have to do anything else. You're not gonna feel it, you know, if you're handling it, as long as you kind of wipe it down a little bit, you're not gonna, um, it's not gonna affect anything. You can, it's gonna feel normal. It's not gonna be greasy. And there's a, there's a small, you know, coating on there now. So that's gonna be protected. So that's a win. All right, let's move on. Okay, so for this bell, uh, I want to redo this completely. I'm going to take the tape off, so I'll just get a plastic tool and try to get that off. I might use a heat gun, but we'll take this old duct tape off. I mean, that's like 20 years old or more. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this citrus strip on, on this one. Even though I could use the sanding mop, that, that will strip this paint off, but let's just use the citrus strip as an example so you can see that. So first I'm gonna take this tape off and then I'm gonna place some of the citrus strip gel on here and we'll see how that, how that works. Heat guns are your friend, you guys. Just a heat gun like this and uh, if you warm stuff up, it, it oh, look at this, it's just coming off by itself now. Not even having to touch it. <laughs> it's just comes off super easy. Look at that. Boom. Need a little more heat. Super easy. Look at that. Awesome. All right, slight change of plans. I cleaned this bell up 
with the zero steel wool. And I used the WD-40. I got it inside it out. However, there is a little bit of rust down at the bottom there. It's kind of hard to reach, but we're gonna address this a little differently. First, I'm gonna finish um, cleaning all the WD-40 off of it. And I like to use solvent. This is lacquer thinner. I keep in a spray bottle and I just spray stuff down. I'm trying to degrease. Let me get that inside. So lacquer thinner, uh, you can use paint thinner, you can use acetone. I like lacquer thinner. Um, you can use alcohol, but this stuff is really great and it dries super fast. In fact, you can see it drying right there. Boom. Uh, and it will just get all the grease and oil off of things and then you're ready for paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and paint this straight away with some automotive paint. And I'll show you that in a second. Before we paint the cowbell, by the way, here is a look at our Atok bell. Look at that. Rust is almost completely gone from the inside and that was just using this stuff, the rust dissolver. You see there's still a little, little bit. So we can still hit that again um, until it's gone, but it, it basically converts it to a neutral substance and it leaves the coating on there. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna continue to rust, but I think I'll, I'll spread a little more on here and let's let that dry. And then we're, then we're done with this one. We're ready to paint our little cowbell and I'm gonna use this stuff. Uh, I just happen to have enough left over in this uh, can. And it, you don't have to use high temperature paint, but I like this VHT stuff. It's, it goes on well, and you can uh, use a heat gun to kind of firm it up, dry it on, and it's gonna hold up. Now I'm, I'm using a flat black. You can do satin. I just happen to have some flat, and I believe that's the finish for this bell. So we're gonna use this. You also do not need primer with this. So it'll be rust inhibitor. Don't need a primer, goes right on. The bell is super clean. Let's go. That's our first coat. Remember when you guys paint real thin coats, just put it on thin. I raised it up on a couple springs just to uh, allow the air to move around the bell. I think that helps a little bit, but uh, we're gonna come back to this right now. We're gonna go over and check on our citrus strip. I decided to just do a little section of this bell just to show you guys uh, how this stuff works. Uh, when you are stripping paint, um, it's, it, it's effective to use steel wool. It's gonna get gummed up, but if you really wanna remove everything and have the surface be clean um, of paint, you see how that, oh man, that's just wiping right off. All right, so, we can see here the issue is that the rust was actually all in there under the paint. So this one, um, maybe we do need to strip this. You know what? I think I will go ahead and use a chemical on this entire bell. Um, I don't know if I'll show the whole process, but look at that. The rust is under the paint. So, But you can see when you use a chemical, this was on here about 15 minutes. Uh, you know, that's completely paint free on that area. And then the steel wool helps to uh, get all the gunky stuff. Um, you could rinse the steel wool out with solvent, but um, yeah, either way, just use steel wool. I do feel like this way is not environmentally great. It's probably better to just use steel wool or a, a sanding mop or sandpaper or some other way to strip it off. But even with this zero steel wool, you're not, you're not scratching the surface much, a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna take this tape off and finish getting all the paint off of this bell. This is the large cowbell with citrus strip on the paint. You know, let that sit a few minutes. And while that's happening, we're gonna clean up these chrome bells. And as I mentioned earlier, these are not too bad. A little tiny bit of rust there, a little bit on the inside. But let me show you how to clean up chrome. First, I'm gonna use the heat gun and take this uh, take this sticker off, this logo, sorry, Toka. Uh, I'm gonna use the heat gun to take that off and then we're gonna hit this with the quadruple-aught steel wool. 
All right, so like we did with the other bell, uh, we're gonna put a little bit, and I like to, I like to peel some of this off and just use a little. If you use the whole thing, uh, if you use the whole wad of steel wool, then the whole wad gets all messed up. Uh, so you, you just need a little bit. We're gonna take a little and we're gonna spray some WD-40 into it. And then there's some goop here from the label. We're gonna just take that off real quick. And I want to draw your attention to how this is not scratching the chrome at all. Let's take a section. See on the top here. Now you can't you can't polish chrome, but you can clean it. So we're not gonna get scratches out. There's a couple big scratches here. Those are not coming out. Don't try to get scratches out. You can't, you can't buff chrome. Uh, but we can certainly clean it up. And let me see, where was that little rusty spot? Here's a little rust spot right here. Let's see how this works on that. Gone completely. So sometimes there'll be a little imperfection uh, in the chrome and the rust will come through. But if you, if you do this with the steel wool, you can pretty much wipe those out completely. Now, if we go here, let's see how we can do with that. Look at that, you guys. See what I mean? So the rust comes through and it kind of spreads out, but then if you really clean it, you'll find out that it's just coming through some tiny little holes. And at this point, there's just nothing there anymore. There's now there's still holes here that could that could rust through, but if you keep a coating of this WD-40 in there, you're gonna be okay. And like I said, just don't you know, the whole reason this has rust is because I foolishly left it in a bin on the on some shelves outside and it got a little moisture into the bin. But we're looking good. Uh, and then you can just wipe this off. Look at that. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, we'll get back to some of the other bells. All right, I'm gonna show you guys why I like the sanding mop. You can see right there, but I'll show you how quickly this thing works. And this is with 320 sandpaper, um, but this is an old mop, so it's not as uh, coarse as it used to be, but check it out. That's how that works. <laughs> so if you have a, a grinder and um, you know you you purchase one of these sanding mops, I mean you you probably need enough projects to make it worth it. But man, it works great, and it it'll clean all these little uneven spots too. So I'm gonna keep working, and I'll show you the finished product. I'm gonna do this bell and this big salsa bell on the sanding mop. All right, here's our other black cowbell, and I'm going to take this wire brush and remove as much of the paint as possible. Also, there was some tape up here that was uh, kind of solidified on there, so I'm gonna try to scrub that off. I need two hands to do it, but you can see um, the paint's coming off pretty easy. So let's get this thing cleaned up. Okay, here's our large cowbell. I just stripped most of the paint off. 
uh, but we still have a little ways to go. We still have some goopy stuff up here. Um, I just want to pause and say that every technique is, it has trade-offs, right? The good thing about chemical is that it will pretty much get everything off, but it's messy. And you go through a lot of paper towels, you're creating waste, you're putting toxic stuff into potentially, you know, the landfills. I don't, I really don't like that. Uh, mechanical takes some more elbow grease. It creates dust. You got to be careful of that. Um, and you may not be able to get into all of the little crevices uh, just doing a mechanical. Uh, it kind of depends on your, your goal. If you're going to repaint it, it doesn't really need to be perfectly clean. Um, if you're going to do clear coat or you're going to leave it bare metal, then you want it, you know, pretty clean. So you just have to choose. I, I honestly, I end up using both methods a lot. Like right now I'm going to go to steel wool um, and try to get this stuff off. Maybe use the heat gun. So we'll see. I'm just going to keep working on it until the outside is as clean as I can get it. Here we are with an update. Okay. So the cha-cha bell, which cleaned up really nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a clear on this one. Um, although I did just put some rust converter down inside in there. So I'm going to wait until that sets up. I also might go ahead and paint this bell because I realize some of this is not rust. It just looks rusty and it has some writing on it from before I bought it. So I may, I may just go ahead and paint this black. I think I might do that. It's already painted. It's already got some coats on it. Um, on the cowbell front, this is our other cha-cha bell. And I think what I'm going to do for this one, I don't really like the flat black. I'm going to go with a satin. This is a Latin percussion black beauty bell. One of the first cowbells I ever owned. And uh, I think I'm going to hit it with the satin. Same with this one. This is also an LP definitely needs to be painted because of the spot welding and it's just very uneven but I cleaned it up as best I can so uh, I'm just gonna hit it again with this VHT uh, roll bar and chassis paint this stuff's great you don't need a primer rust inhibitor and that's a satin black so now we can see what what that'll look like on these two bells and then might hit this one later. This needs to dry, that needs to dry. So I'm gonna move those out of the way and just focus on these right now. All right, that's one coat of black on the large bell and one coat of the satin black on the small bell. While those, uh, while I'm waiting for that to set up, I'm gonna address this one. This is an Ogle Go. And this one had a clear coat on it, which I also wanna replicate, but first I'm, I'm just taking it off with the uh, citrus paint remover. So I'm going to clean this up and uh, we'll take a look and maybe we can spray the clear on this. I just learned a couple things about these Agogo. Go. One is that they're by LP and they were called Esoteric. It's kind of hard to read that. But this is a, um, a product that I believe was meant to imitate or parallel the work of um, this guy, which is Pete Englehart. Uh, you can see Pete Englehart logos here. It's a P and an E. And Pete would make a lot of, he made everything by hand. Only one person making it. Um, and there have been some other companies that have emulated his work. I think this is one of those cases. Doesn't make it bad. It's just, uh, I don't know how valuable this is. So I'm not gonna put a ton of time into resurrecting it um also i just realized that the the citrus remover citrus uh paint remover did not remove the finish on here so whatever's on here is really tough um so i'm gonna stick it onto the uh, sanding mop real quick but it i may not be able to get it super clean and i'm okay with that i'm i'm not gonna put a lot of time into this one but still it's better than it was and we'll get it cleaned up as much as we can. All right, let's go. All right, everybody, here we are. A couple days later, I just got back from a short trip, but I wanna show you the finished bells and we'll probably have my neighbor's dogs barking in the background, but I can't control that. So let's start with the 
Atoke. Uh, this was really rusty, and all I did with this one is treat it with the rust inhibitor inside and out. And I think you can see in there that it's super clean now. I just kind of brushed it off, um, and that's it for this. I'm not going to put anything else on it. Just finished. Uh, the other one that's pretty, pretty much just a simple fix was this uh, clave bell. And this one had some rust, surface rust, and I just did steel wool with the WD-40. And I'm just going to leave it like that, like that with the WD-40 coating. Um, the other one that I did with a chemical was this one, and I sprayed that Permatex on it. And then I did go ahead and give it uh, one coat with a semi-gloss black car paint. And um, you can see that it's, it's really nice, very clean. Um, it also, the painted bells I discovered also mute the sound a little, but I have another video where I'm playing all these. You can watch that. I'll leave a link below. Um, and then we had the painted bells, right? And these, I, I stripped down, not completely, but I stripped them down. This one I did with a flat paint. I didn't really like the finish. It was too flat. And so I went ahead and did a, just a semi-gloss. And you can see that it, the paint I did, I, I sprayed it from a distance. So it has a little bit of a, a rough texture. But I actually like that. Um, I like the way that looks. And I also sprayed the inside a little bit just to give it a quick coat. So that's how that turned out. This one, um, I got to say... <laughs> I was pretty happy with the first coat, but then I put the second coat on too heavy and I had some drips. And so that's what this, like right in here, I I had to sand it down and I used pretty rough paper. You can kind of see some scratches in there from the paint, but I don't really care. I mean, this is a very old bell and it looks fine from a distance, but you can see here it's, it's not perfect. Uh, this is that old LP bell, but still it looks great. It looks so much better. And these also had duct tape on them. And I discovered with a you know a few coats of paint, it it really muffles the sound of the bell. So if you have a bell that's really ringy, and you want it to sound more dry and dead, and get all that high ringiness out, you can if you paint it with paint or clear coat, uh, it'll mute the bell, and you don't need to tape it. This one was also it was similar to the clave bell. I just did uh, some steel wool, so some of the quadruple zero steel wool with a little WD-40, also the inside. And that's all I did on this one, cleaned up nice, the chrome. And then on this one, I uh, brushed it with, well, actually, no, I did a chemical. I did that citrus um, paint remover, but it didn't, I don't think it removed the clear coat that was on here. So I used the, the uh, mop, the sanding mop to get this cleaned up. And then I did a coat of clear on it. So it's similar to the way it was originally and uh, went the inside and inside and out with the with a clear coat. And that was all the paint I'm using, the clear and the black paint is all for automobiles. And I, I like the BHT paint. It works really well. And I also shoot it with a heat gun after I paint it. After it dries, I shoot it with a heat gun a little bit. And that really helps to cure the paint, harden it up, make it more durable. And so that's it, you guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. And uh, good luck with your restorations of instruments, especially metal ones. I hope you've got some good tips. And if you have any helpful tips for anybody, leave them below in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications. All right. I'll see you guys later.